What's up, friends? All right, so last night I was working on something and um, I just built something I thought was kind of interesting. So uh, this is a calculator component created on CodePen like a year ago or quite a while ago from Michael Jackson. Um, and I've um, modified it slightly for uh, usage in my own instructional stuff. And one thing that I added last night was the ability to register and log in. And they're actually exactly the same thing. Um, kind of don't like that. Okay, so then you can, um, so if I go to register, then I can say, hey, that's my username and hey is my password. And then your thing shows up and then you can log out. And then I can log in as, hey, hey. And actually the back end is like kind of silly. It doesn't actually authenticate or anything. It's just like you can log in as anybody and, and whatever. Um, and you're assigned like a, a new spot in the user space is kind of, kind of weird. But um, anyway, the thing I wanted to show was how um, like originally this little component was, didn't have the login capabilities. It was just like the one page. It was just the app. It was basically just uh, just this one component and it didn't have any props or anything. It was just render this app. But I added a bunch of stuff so that I could have uh, users. And um, yeah, I just thought I'd show that to you because um, I think it's kind of interesting. So the way that it works is I use reach component component. I love this thing. It's so great. Um, I also added reach router so I could have these routes. Uh, but the way that it works is I have my initial state that's just an empty object here. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then I have my state and my set state. And then um, I have this load user component. So this load user component is kind of interesting. Um, it accepts the user. Here, let's uh, pull both of these up. Uh, so we're passing state.user and then a set user, which will take a user and call set state uh, to update the component with the user, which will flow back through and then the user will uh, view whatever that object was. So load user is also a function component that uses component component from reach. And uh, what it does is first it'll check local storage and if it has, uh, if there's a token in local storage, um, then, uh, well, okay, so first off, if there is a user, so like this doesn't apply when we first run this, our initial state is empty object will pass uh, state.user, which is undefined. Uh, and so there won't be a user. And if there is not a token in local storage, then we'll just render the children um, and it'll uh, render the router and the app. And then you can log in if you want to, whatever. Um, but in the event that you have logged in and um, there is a token in local storage, but there's not a user. So um, yeah, we haven't already gone to fetch the user or whatever, but there is a token. So it's like, hey, there's a token here. We might be able to, to go log in uh, or, or to go retrieve the user object, right? And that's, that's the story that we're telling here. Uh, and so we're going to use component component um, to initialize state with loaded as false, um, which actually now I think of it, I don't, I don't actually use that. So we can get rid of that. Um, but uh, yeah, and yeah, we'll just get rid of that. We don't need that. Um, but we're just using component did mount, uh, which is like so rad that I can do this just in this component uh, thing here. I could like make this whole thing a class component, but why would I want to do that? Just use component component. It's great. I love it. Uh, but yeah, so then in my did mount, I say fetch and I fetch um, for the at the me uh, route with the authorization bearer token. Um, and so that it's it says, hey, go look up me. And here's my token. So find the user that um, or deserialize this token into a user object. Um, and then we'll uh, JSON that thing. And um, this r.json is going to turn the response object into the data, um, like the JSON or, or the JavaScript object, um, which is the data, which is going to be our user. So then we'll just um, call set user with that user. Um, if there is an error at some point in here, this should probably be um, a second argument here. Now I think of it because if set user throws an error, we don't want to catch that. We'll we'll just want to have that throw. So we're going to set user if there is an error, 
then we'll say local storage remove token because that token doesn't work for some reason and then we'll call set user to be null and so let's look at the um, this error case here really quick so if if I call set user to be null then that's going to re-render this whole thing so now state dot user is going to be null um, I come back in here in the process of re-rendering and I see oh the token is not there um, so if there's a user there's not but there's not a token then we're just going to render the children and so then we just render render the app and you're not in a logged in state um, but in the event that there is a user then we set that user it gets to set to be an object like that and then this whole thing gets re-rendered load user uh, state dot user which will now be our object so if there is a user which there is then we'll render the children so in either case uh, if there's no token or like so if there's no token they're not logged in or there's a user object they definitely are logged in then we're going to render the children and if there is a token but no user then let's go resolve that token into a user right that's how that flows um, and i feel like that's uh, like pretty straightforward like if i were to rewrite this as a class uh, component i don't know if it would be any more straightforward so i'm loving component component um, i'm also loving reach router it's great um, so here i just render the component that i want to render and i tack on a path prop and uh, the router will take care of that i i just think that's great i love this api um, it's yeah it's fantastic um, yeah and the login form is uh, actually, this is a class component. Um, I could make it a, a not a class component, but uh, class components aren't all that bad, I guess. Um, but yeah, this one's pretty straightforward, I guess. Um, so you have your um, username, password, and submit. And on submit, we're using handle submit. Oh, and I'm using emotion, uh, the Babel plugin for emotion. So I just use this CSS prop. It's awesome. I can even have focus. Um, stuff I just think it's great uh, but yeah so when you click submit notice I'm not using any refs or anything I just have these name properties and then here um, I get e.target which will be my form and forms have elements and it has a couple properties on it but um, some of those properties are the elements by their name and so we have username password those are going to be HTML input elements and then I can get those values and I'll pluck them off and I'm aliasing the value to username and password. So then when I say fetch and I'm going to fetch at that URL, it's going to be either register or login. Uh, then I'm going to post uh, the username and password with those headers. And then I'll uh, serialize that or deserialize that and then get that user object. And it's like magic. Ta-da. Great. Um, otherwise, we'll set state with an error, and if there is an error, then we'll just say, hey, there was an error. What's up? Um, so yeah, that's basically how that works. Um, I think that's pretty much all that I really care to show you. I, I also, like this um, app accepts a user, and so if there is a user, then we're going to render the username display and a logout button. Otherwise, we'll render the links to register and login. Um, oh yeah, there was one one kind of interesting thing let's see it, i think it's oh yeah it was in the login form so reach router has this navigate thing and it couldn't be easier i did have some trouble with they also have a redirect to and a redirect component and both of those i got an error in the console um and i'm pretty sure that the way ryan implemented it is it's um throwing a promise and uh catching that with a component uh, did catch um and i think that's logging an error even though he has a component to catch and so i didn't want that um i'm not sure how to solve that problem or if maybe i was doing something wrong but this navigate thing where seems to work pretty nice and i don't have to like hook this thing up to the router or whatever i just say yeah import navigate from reach router and it just works i like that i think that's pretty cool um yeah i think that was pretty much it so um i i'm I'm not really going to be talking about this in, in my course. I'm, um, I added all this stuff so that I could do some Cypress tests, um, which themselves are kind of cool. If you are bored, then you could maybe help me figure out why this test isn't working. Um, this project is on GitHub, just Cypress React Babel Webpack, and maybe you could figure out what why this test 
working. I'm trying to simulate um, a fa failure. So like when you go to register, the server's not there or something. Uh, so I'm not sure how to, uh, so that I can verify that the error message shows up. Uh, I'm not sure why that's not working, but it's it's not catching this and making an actual server call, which is successful. So anyway, that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, I got a question from somebody. Hey Kent, enjoyed your talk at React Rally. Thanks. Does um, RTL, which is React Testing Library, which I have mixed feelings about because I also have a library called RTL CSS JS, which is right to left CSS and JS, which is like um, taking your CSS and JS and swapping it so that it works for right to left languages. So I I never call React Testing Library RTL, but I'm fine if other people do because it makes a lot of sense. You don't want to type that whole thing out, but I have mixed feelings about it. Anyway, uh, does React Testing Library have documentation for testing reach router? N no, not testing reach router, but it would be very similar to um, the examples. So we've got a bunch of examples here and you can pull them all up in code sandbox. And if you go to test react router, uh, it would be basically be exactly like this thing. Um, so you'd have a render with router um, and then you'd render it with the router. Um, I don't know how you would do the history API thing. I'm not sure how, like whether that would work. Um, yeah, you'd have to investigate that one a little bit, but uh, it should be basically the same. Like pretty much any any provider uh, type situation is basically the same. You just render it with the provider. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, thanks everybody. This was fun. I hope that uh, this was helpful and that you have a wonderful day and I'll see you all later. Bye.